Hi everybody, it's Nikki and I'm here to do a video that's personal experience, um, no medical advice, personal opinion, um, and somewhat in response to kind of a steady flow of um, questions that I get, you know, sometimes on in a couple of different places. Um, often about like what are my thoughts on the T-Slim or you know, what do you think about this particular thing in comparison to the 670G. Um, so because I, because I have a lot of opinions um, and because I do feel very strongly about some of these things, I figured maybe it was time just to do a comparison. So that's what I'm doing. Um, it is 10, pa 10 pages, because <laughs> um, that's how I do it, um, but that's what it is. So you might just turn it off now <laughs> if you weren't in for that, um, and that's okay. And I'll tell you, I'm in my teenager's room, and he would be totally freaked out <laughs> if he knew it, but my family doesn't watch my videos. <laughs> so. <laughs> So I'll be laughing about this for a week. Okay, anyway, um, all right. So I am comparing my 670G to my T-Slim. Very quick history. I wore the 670G for about a year and a half. I did auto mode and I really did auto mode. I mean, everything from just blind faith, like of course this thing is gonna work um, and doing whatever I was supposed to do, whatever I was told to do, um, to really trying to figure out how to get it to work. Um, could never get it to work um, and I'm not crazy about auto mode doesn't mean I'm not crazy about my 670G the 670G is fine um, for me it's best as a dumb pump um, as best without the sensor which is as you know it's best just uh, pumping with it but um, I've been on the T-Slim for about four months courtesy of my friends at FUD uh, which was the most awesome gift in the world and I absolutely do love the T-Slim um, but in order to give it a fair review, I'm going to kind of pick them both apart um, and do what's good and what's bad because there are some good and bad things to both of them, um, in my opinion. And I'll say that this is all in my opinion. And because I think it does not mean that it represents, you know, even one other person's thinking or thoughts. Um, but this is from the angle of my disease, my standards, my expectations, my hopes, dreams, you know. Um, that's what it is. So not everybody will agree with these things because some people have, you know, are different. <laughs> so that's, and that's what it is. So, so I'll start with, um, the physical pump. I don't know who I think would be coming, but anyway, okay. Um, I'll start with the physical pump. Basically, um, I thought it was best to start with kind of the handling of them and, and what it was like to you know, do functions with them, give boluses, look at the screen, um, the size, stuff like that. No specifics in this regard, except for when it gets to the screen, because I was interested in what the 670G had to offer within the screen, um, and the T-Slim doesn't have to offer that. So I'll talk a little bit about that, but as far as like, um, you know, specifics on the weight and everything else, I don't have it. Um, I can tell you, we'll start there. Um, here they are. My 670G is not attached. I have it running right now because I'm hoping to do a few experiments. Um, I am attached to my T-Slim and I am getting insulin through that. Um, and I was in auto mode in my 670G up until last night, I think. I think I got dropped out of it. Um, but here they are, okay. And I'll talk about that, that button too. So this is what they look like. They are comparable. Um, they're comparable in size. They both have on, like this This has a case on and this has a skin on. Um, if the skin is bulky, the belt clip is bulky on the 670G, bulkier than those two. Um, so this does feel slimmer. Um, I do think it weighs slightly less and I do think it's slightly just smaller. I don't know if you can actually see any of this. I do think it's a slightly smaller uh, pump. Um, Part of the bulk in this is the skin, and so a lot of times if I want to take, if I want to put this like in a fanny pack, because I do, <laughs> because I do wear those, um, I like to take the skin and the belt clip off, because then it feels, you know, it feels much more reasonable. Um, with everything on, it can feel very bulky. Um, what was I going to say? The belt, the belt clips. I'll talk about the belt clips for for a second. Um, I think they both suck. I really dislike the belt clip. Um, not everybody has a hard time with them. I will tell you, I have a wound on my left hip from my 670G belt clip. Um, and it's because I am, you know, hard-headed and I wear it in the same place all the time. But I wear it in the same place all the time so that I don't bump into the wall when I turn the corner, you know, and knock off my pump. 
So I'm very used to having it on the left side of my body. It is where I put it, um, and I do have like a wound um, that I got during the 670. Um, and again, this is like a little plastic clip, um, but the metal T-Slim clip has not made it better. Um, in fact, I do think it's kind of a little bit even harder on my hip. Um, with that being said, it's a lot more durable. Um, this thing, knock on wood, um, I have not, I haven't snapped it yet. Um, it didn't take me long to snap my, my 670G uh, belt clip. They have upgraded the belt clip so that there's one, there's a, there's a breakaway belt clip. Um, I think a lot of people think it's fine. Um, I think I thought it was fine. I can't really remember now. Um, I do think that sometimes it breaks away and then you have to like try to figure out how to get it attached again. Um, and I do remember it being even bulkier, but I might be wrong on that. <clears throat> um, but as far as belt clips go, I do think Omnipod wins <laughs> because you don't have to do, you know, you don't have to suffer wound hips, um, from your Omnipod. But in this case, I don't know. I think they are... Both a little bit of a nuisance, but that's a tu that's a, that's a tubed pump. Um, that's 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 what you get. Um, size screen. Okay, so this one is the this is the one that kind of matters a little bit more to me. And I will say that with my T Slim, um, I don't need as much information as what I needed with the six seventy G. Specifically, when I was in auto mode, I needed a lot of information. Like I needed to know whether or not I had received any insulin in the last hour or three hours ago. I needed to know whether or not, you know, how far away I was from my, mo my most recent bolus, um, <clears throat> you know, whether or not I had calibrated, if I had actually entered that number. I mean, there was a lot of information I needed in order to remain in auto, in order to get it to, to work. The T-Slim, I just don't need that kind of information. Um, in fact, there is a little bit of that ignorance is bliss and I'm not even sure that's a good fit. Um, there's something to not fiddling with it all the time and letting it do. Okay, I've got cats in the house. So I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Um, and, and letting it do what it does. That's what I was told to do with the 670G. So I know some people are like, oh, well, did you give the 670G a chance? And my answer would be yes, I really did. Um, and it really sent me you know, to, into high blood sugars repeatedly. Uh, when I give my T-Slim a chance, it doesn't, and I know why. It's because of the shorter suspends. Um, so there, so I don't need that information from the from the graph screen all the time. Um, with that being said, I loved having access to it. I'm a graph screen junkie, um, and I did like to scroll across, which I could do. So that's a little bit of a taste of the sunlight, too. They're, they're both a little bit harder to see in sunlight. Um, here's my graph screen. I'll go up to 24 hours because that's how far out I am now. And basically, I'm going the wrong way. I could scroll across. You can scroll across your graph screen and you can take a look at the specific time. If there's a bolus, you can see a bolus, food bolus, correction bolus. If there is a um, calibration, you can see that information. You can see, I'll try to get back to where auto mode is. Um, it'll tell you what your SG was, which is your sensor, your sensor value. It'll tell you if there was an alert that had popped up. Not all of them. Some of them have to go under alarms. Um, it will tell you what your SG is. If you've entered a BG, it'll also tell you what your BG is. I mean, it's just there was a lot of information. It'll tell you micro boluses. That's what I was, you know, that's what I was in it for. So if you go over to the pink dots, those are your micro boluses. There you go. I had 1.025. And it lists all of them. Um... So I liked that a lot. There is, there's three, six, 12, 24 hours, just as there is in the T-Slim. Um, and the T-Slim, as I said, you cannot scroll across it. But I can make it bigger. It's a little bit different of a, it's, for me, it feels a little bit distorted. I'm really used to looking at the Medtronic screen. So this feels different, um, but that's what it is. It's all kind of rough estimates too. Like you can see times, but you can't scroll across. There is no specific information in this screen. There is your, you can get a visual like, okay, yeah, in this case, I've had a ton of suspends. Um, my, my blood sugar is a 134. My sensor value is a 134. I'm in the three hours. Um, you know, that's basically what it is. So I'm, so I can get some guesstimates. I can do some guesstimating. Um, but I don't have specifics. If I want specifics, I can go into my history. I can find out, I can go into my basal IQ history. 
and find out um, suspends when they began and when they resumed, um, or when insulin began, when I was suspended and when the insulin resumed, I can look up um, boluses, I can look, you know, but it was convenient to be able to scroll across um, on the 670G screen and get that information. Um, if you use the Dexcom mobile app, you can, I was gonna show you, you can actually scroll across on the mobile app screen um, and it won't give you boluses. I'm mean, actually, I can't say it won't. I don't log any of my activity in there. Um, so it's possible if you log something, maybe you can see that as well. And that might be worth just you know trying out to see what's available. Um, but you can definitely scroll across and see specific times and um, blood sugar values. Um, so, and I've done it from time to time. Like I said, I like the, I like the scrolling across. <laughs> Apparently that's my thing. Um, the screens in the sunlight are about the same. I go out one day and I feel like the T-Slim is like way worse. And then I go out the next day and I'm like, oh yeah, no, actually it's a little bit better. So I don't know why that would be. They're, they're different screens. I'll try one more time to see if I can hold it because this is kind of daylight, daylight-ish in this room. That's not really daylight-ish. That's, that's still a shaded. So those are both fairly um, visible. If I stepped out into the sunlight, I would have difficulty seeing both of them. I do think it's a little bit harder to, to see the T-Slim, but I'm not positive. Um, and anyway, it's no different than what your phone is like in the sunlight. So that kind of, you know, you shade it a little bit, helps a little bit. You step under a, a tree, that helps a little bit. You get into a big shaded area, everything's back to normal again, it's fine. Um, 11 and a half minutes. I don't even know how that happened. 11 and a half minutes and I've talked about one thing. Okay, so that's the, that's the physical pump. That was a big one. And I'm going to come back to do, I got a lot of stuff I want to talk about and some of it's more fun for me, like the accuracy and the sensor stuff and the delivery. So I'll be back to talk about alerts. Um, I'll get the boring stuff out of the way and then I'll get to the good stuff. Thanks for watching. Bye.